Andrew Wolvers here, the one seed, has not lost today. In fact, he's only lost once all weekend. Green Red Ponza in the semifinals is up against John to Bruin on Infect. The winner of this will play Storm in the finals. You don't know who's playing that Storm deck. The Storm players have got to be cheering for Wolvers here. Infect is their bad matchup. Oh, absolutely. But let's see. Remember, Andrew's deck only has, has no cards on two, so he, we play here. A turn one Birds of Paradise is one of the things he needs. He finally kept a hand with Birds. That nah. is very important for the deck. We did see him last time keep hands, which didn't have any plays till Blood Moon. He won those games. Not all of them. <laughs> he won some of, a, a game where he did that. <laughs> On John's side. Let's see what he has. Glistener Elf, of course, scary if he has one. Glistener Elf or Noble Hierarch will both be yeah. good here. Noble Hierarch, fair enough. Mal Noble Hierarch off Basic Forest. Yes. Take that, take that, Blood Moon. I hope he doesn't have a Blood Moon one, though John does need to set up an Infect threat. Blood Moon would always cover Ink Moth Nexus. Andrew, fetch is going to be Molten Ring. It's going to be Blood Moon. Blighted Agent. Okay. Blighted Agent, turn three win. <laughs> get him. That guy gets another basic forest. It's just correct. <laughs> There's a mountain. Three mana. Viridian Corruptor go. Yeah, whatever. It's a one of in the main. Sure, it has Infect. Yeah. Now we look at some four drops that Andrew has access to. He has four Bloodbraid Elves, two Pia and Kiran Nolars, a Chandra Torch of Defiance. So seven cards he could hit here. P and Kieran's kind of the best thing that you'd be looking at. I mean, Chandra would be pretty nice. Just kill the Corruptor, live, keep on moving. Yeah. He has to have the land. You punch through mutagenic growth if you have Chandra. Yeah. You see at least... One protection spell in John's hand. It's Blossoming Defense. Andrew would like to remove the Corruptor if at all possible. Yes. John, uh, I think, has at least one mountain in hand. All right. Yeah, what, what are we seeing on Andrew's side? Tireless Tracker Land Clue. Not... It could have gone better. I... Now, I'm imagining on Andrew's side, we're just going to see him block with Tracker. Yeah, that's going to happen sooner than later. Look at this synergy. Tireless Tracker and Mountain. Yeah, yeah, he can't crack it. <laughs> Just turns off the Windswept Teeth. Bunch of Mountains in play. Yeah, mountain for John as well. So many Mountains. Corruptor will swing. It exalts to a 3-3, but that can still trade with Tireless Tracker. Yeah, that would force a pump spell with a block. Or at least a follow-up infector. Andrew's thinking about this. Is there a chance he doesn't block? He has to block. There's a chance he doesn't block, but I believe it would be incorrect. You have to block here. You might lose if you don't. It's not even that hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two ground swells, game two. <laughs> Thanks for playing. No, Andrew's thinking about it. I mean, maybe he has a hand. That, so, so I was, I was thinking about Tyler Tracker as a speed bump, but it's possible Andrew's, in Andrew's hand it's not a speed bump. And I don't think we saw a block. Was this an instant speed might have old Crosa? That's only plus two. Okay. Still a lot of infect. For five poison then? Fair enough. Now all the, all the fours are lethal. Wow, yeah, he did not. Okay, Ryan, he didn't do, goes, he blinks glistener off. Yeah, there was no block. Big risk by Andrew. But maybe he has to. Maybe this Tyler Tracker needs to draw him more cards. Trying to find one of those two main deck lightning bolts. Has another land. Could be another clue. Here we go, second clue for Andrew. He wants to have a payoff right now. Really wants it to be Pia and Kieran. Multiple blockers are kind of what the doctor ordered here. Molten Rain on the Basic Forest. So that brings John down to just one mana source. Just Noble Hierarch. Yeah, that's fine. And a bunch of mountains. Only two forests in the Infect deck. He's attacking. All right, Pyro's Tracker's coming on in. John at 17. Yeah, John can't cast many spells, but uh, both of his attacks are just good. I, 
please. What are you doing, Andrew? <laughs> Here's a swing. It's three poison just on the board. Bird of Paradise will jump in front of Viridian Corruptor. To Bruin play to land, so here's Groundswell. It's lethal. Does Andrew have his Lightning Bolt? Says so for five. <laughs> God, God, I don't think it's Lightning Bolt. I don't know why you'd slow roll that. Oh, crack a <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, John to Bruin, 1 0. He's up. Oh, and Andrew did everything he wanted to do. He cast Blood Moon and Stone Rain. <laughs> and we're oh, going to game gosh. two here. Okay. I like Ponza. Okay, I'll let me just that I think this deck's great. Um, we'll look at the sideboard. Andrew can make some adjustments. We'll be back with those in just a minute. So game two, Wolvers will get to be on the play again. We did see a Blood Moon that game, but I mean, it didn't really stop John because he had Basic Forest and Noble Hierarch. Okay, on Andrew's side, he's going to need some ways to kill small creatures. He doesn't have any more Lightning Bolts, just has the two in the main, but he may have some other things that can work. Yeah, so for the sideboard, we have three Anger of the Gods, two Ancient Grudge, a couple of Kitchen Finks, a couple of Scavenging Ooze, two Trinisphere, a Chandra Torch of Defiance, an Obstinate Bailoth, a Shatterstorm, and he thrown the last troll. Anger's pretty slow in the matchup, but he's got to do it. Colin, now he's going to board in the Trinisphere. Yes, Trinisphere really slows down the Infect deck some. I mean, it's not even that good. He's going to board it in. Yeah, just it's one of his cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Ancient Grudges are reasonable. They cover Ink Moth Nexus. Right. I mean, the way I like about Trinosphere is Ponza like, plays one card per turn anyway, so might as well make your opponent do it too. Yeah, exactly. Put him on even footing. Yeah, Anger's good. So you do like Grudge? Hit something. Yeah, I mean, the main deck is just so bad, right? And yeah, maybe you just play it in the Chandra, it kills something. Sometimes, yeah, the Chandra's On turn four there, we won. I would have loved to see Chandra that game. Yes. Now, John DeBru inside, three Nature's Claim. I guess he could fight over Blood Moon if he wanted to. Two Spell Sky, two Grafter's Cage, two Pulse of Marasa, two Kitchen Finks, Pithing Needle, Shaper Sanctuary, Dispel, and Hercules Recall. There's not much I'm looking for here, Ryan. Should be some pretty light sideboarding. I think that trying to fight over the Blood Moon is just kind of incorrect. And there's not enough removal to really warrant fighting over that. Yeah, and the extra removal is Anger of the God, so Kitchen Finks also isn't even good. No, Spell Sky's no good. Do you like anything? Eh. I Literal don't. anything. Maybe Dispel. It's not even good, though. Yeah, because yeah, your Pump Spells are already good against Lightning Bolt. So, no, I, I don't 
don't really like the sideboard When you here. have a zero-card sideboard against your opponent, do you pretend to sideboard in three cards and board them out? Or do you just open up your box and then shut it and move it to the side and look your opponent in the eyes? I open up my box. I verify. So every time before I start a game, I verify my sideboard. So I would count my 15 cards, put them back in the box, and then start shuffling. You already did in game one. You're not changing anything. No need. <laughs> you're sending a message. When you look at them, when you open the box, and then you just shut it and move it to the side, you're sending them a message. You're saying, I don't need these to beat you. <laughs> Andrew will be on the play again. I uh, I rarely have a matchup where I'm sideboarding zero cards because I don't play like these 80-20 decks. 10-1 Arbor Elf for Andrew. John, basic forest noble hierarch. All right, that's game. Yep. That, yep. That, that's game. <laughs> okay, pack it in. <laughs> How do we beat that? There's no way. The, bl my bl the Blood Moon plan blood does nothing. Blood Moon's covered. Stone Rain's covered. You'd have to have a third thing. Andrew's side. You know, with these turn one R buff starts out, they can have some very good turn twos. You can see something like a turn two or three Inferno Titan. That, that would do it. Uh, attacking with the Arbor Elf is less exciting. Ooh, no Stone Rain. And then makes another Arbor Elf. Okay, this means if we see next turn a Utopia Sprawl, we can just go to town. A fast Inferno Titan is actually yeah. very good in the matchup. Yeah, one Sprawl and one... A land Sprawl Inferno Titan makes a Titan next turn. And, and that'll that's going to KO Infect pretty well. Like, I don't see them beating that card very much. Isn't land Sprawl one shy? You have two, four, five. You have seven. You don't even need the land. You just put Sprawl on the land, tap it three times. Oh, right, right, right. Yep, 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 yep. Attack with Noble Hierarch for John. Makes another one and exalts up for two. For some reason, I missed the land's ability to just tap on its own. So do you play enough Amulet and you're just really cool with multiple untaps of lands that make lots of mana? It's just <laughs> like, it, it's like I've done this before. <laughs> Ponza, like counting, counting my mana with this deck is easy. Hold on. But no infectors yet for John. Yeah, the sprawl would likely be coming off the top as well. If he had one, he would have already seen it. Most like. But now Wilbur's head, he has all these mid-range threats in the green red deck, and because John has not presented a fast infector, Andrew will have the time to cast them. Even, yeah. even something like P and Kier on Nalar is gonna be really crushing. We saw John wasn't thrilled about the hand at the start of the game. Yeah, and yeah, I see why. I get how basic forest and noble hierarch is just important. Four mana for Andrew. Is it PN Kiron? Maybe a Chandra? All of them above seem pretty good. Yeah, from here, Chandra is even totally reasonable. It's going to be Chandra Torture Defiance. If he minus threes it, he'll actually lose the Planeswalker. So we'll see what Andrew wants to do. Yeah, I, I'd probably even just plus it. Which one? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Exiling uh, cards probably on average better. That's he does. Shoots John for two. Down to 16. It says go. Ultimately, you have to win the game through damage. Yeah. So getting that chip shot's fine. The odds that you exile a good card aren't that high. Just like that turn two Arbor off chip shot. Yeah. Got in there. John already down to 15. It's going to be pretty important for John to have an infect creature this turn. But if he does, still got a pretty full hand. Good chance he'll be able to defend it. Well, yeah, he'll have to. The thing is the Chandra will make some card advantage. Uh, as the Chandra minus three can shoot down any one creature John plays. I was going to say, as long as it's not Ink Moth Nexus. <laughs> yeah, not going to play against that it. one. Should have said it. Nah. Andrew's still pretty live if he can make some Thopter tokens. Yeah, but it's not even out of the picture with these two Exalted triggers and the Ink Moth that John just tends him next turn. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nope. Uh, th you would have to have like Distortion Strike to pump, punch through PN Kieran, though. Noble Hierarch exalts up, hits Chandra down to three, so now if Andrew uses it as a removal spell, it'll he'll lose the walker. John just says go. And despite the fact that John's not really casting anything, his board is should be concerning for Andrew. Yes, there's plenty of mana available, plenty of cards in hand. 
That attack into the Chandra, I like that sequencing a lot. Yeah. You're not winning through regular damage. I that, also like that he didn't use a pump spell to try to kill the Chandra. Yeah. You know, the Chandra doesn't really matter. The attack doesn't really matter. So yeah. you're just putting that chip shot in because the mana also doesn't matter. Yeah, all Chandra can do is kill a Noble Hierarch. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I guess make mana if Andrew has some huge play. Yeah. John just has plenty of green mana available. There's the two forests yeah. there. Don't really have many blue spells that you need to cast. He needs to make sure that he doesn't get stone rained on that Ink Moth. Yeah, that he can fight over with protection spells, though. Just uh, animate yeah. the land. If you have a blossoming defense, you should be in the clear. Yeah. John trying to win next turn. Can Andrew defend? P and Kiron, you mentioned, would be a really good card here. Mm -hmm. I think that's his best singular card. Yeah. There's some combinations of cards that can add up as well. Plus his Chandra for an Arbor Elf. First, he made an extra mana before doing that. So he has a green floating. Oh, so the, 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 reason, the reason that you do that is that Arbor Elf's not a mana ability. Oh, so he hits, and you have to cast it immediately? And he's looking for Pia and Kieran. Okay, So you right, want to have access to four mana. Right, Arbor Elf's not actually a mana ability. Okay, that's, that makes sense. And we see Bloodbraid Elf from Andrew. Uh, this does not convert into uh, minion game winning lines. No. Uh, Stone Rain, he'll go for Ink Moth Nexus. John needs Blossoming Defense. Or... I am sure that he has something for this. So you, want, you need Blossoming Defense or Apostle's Blessing, right? And he does not. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. Now things are very bad for John. Yeah, he had a bunch. He had a lethal pump. You can't pump through Stone Rain. Great cascade for Wolpers. Says go. Now there's a question of can John throw 16 back? He's got a lot of pump. Oh, well, the Arbor Elf is a blocker. Maybe Andrew doesn't block. <laughs> no, another noble hierarch. All right. Attack you for three. Yeah, three. So what do we need? 13 points of pump. Four, four, six. That's 14, yeah. Yeah, some, yeah. Some Wait, no, no. We don't have enough mana for all that. Some mutagenic growths and a become immense. I mean, yeah, Andrew probably blocks. You could swing both. You know, he'll swing one and exalts to a three. Swinging both would be all kinds of weird. Yeah. So it's a be a three. He needs 13 more. It's a little short. You need two mutagenics to do this. That's yeah. asking for a lot. It's been a lot of time when he didn't cast something. He didn't have a protection spell for the Ink Moth Nexus there. So things that pump make sense as the cards in hand. Swing says at Andrew. Oh, and Andrew's going to block. Uh, no, nope. nope. he's oh, going to oh. cast some kind of... Lightning Bolt? No, 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 that, no, no, no. That That's is worse. not block. as good. Block. Okay, you might lose now. Hold on. All right, let's see what he has. There's definitely a Become Immense, and there's definitely a Mutagenic Growth. Okay, so right now it's a 3-4 before Exalt. Well, it will be. It has three pumps of Exalted. So Mutagenic Growth puts John to 8. I think he's actually short one. So this is going to make it a 5. If he Groundswell, Become Immense. Okay, 6 more makes it 11. Yeah, that's all the mana, though. Tapped the forest and the hierarch so for that. Andrew down to five. Yeah. Next turn, it's going to be really hard to get an unblocked I, attack, though. I don't know if there is a next turn. Yeah, we'll, we'll see only, about right, that. Right, there's only one blocker. Right now, there's already five damage on the board. Chandra kills the hierarch. You swing the team. That's five. You're only you're not asking that much. Yeah, Bloodbraid Elf would do it. Is that breeding pool for John? Okay. He could have made Breeding Pool, but he's not interested. As far as ways to punch through blockers, if we do get another turn for John, there yeah. is one Distortion Strike and one Apostle's Blessing. Okay. Blessing naming green is good on this battlefield. Yeah. And we're down to five. What a weird game we've had here. On our Storm Mirror match, they're going into game three. 
See, floating that mana does Wolbers and then pluses Chandra. Top card's a forest. John down to six. Four damage in play for Andrew. He's close, but not there. You know, Ryan, you could have a super weird board where John swings with three zero ones and pumps the unblocked one. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a thing. That's online. Bloodbraid Elf swings for three. I don't want to jump block from John. No, I'm going to take it. And if you back up to Wolbers throwing that lightning bolt of that noble hierarch. Yeah, that would, had be, that would be nice. Could have had lethal with that on this turn. John does block. Yeah. And he's going to make a tireless tracker. Well, that's two blockers. Yeah. That block on John's side might cost him. We'll see. Clue for Andrew. Unless he has on the Apostle's Blessing or Distortion Strike you're talking about. Yeah, looks like a couple green cards in the hand yeah. that I can see. Andrew says, yeah, three cards, and he'll say go. Well, I'll have to draw something now. I don't think it was one of the cards we're looking for. Not moving quickly, anyway. No. Breeding pool shocks to four. Maybe. I mean, breeding pool will cast some very nice cards here. Given the Blood Moons and the Stone Rains, it's not clear that this is a matchup where you leave Distortion Strike in, as it can yeah. be difficult to cast. Yeah, fair enough. Noble Hierarch exalts up to a 2-3, but Andrew's going to block. And he'll untap some mana, probably to crack a clue. Viridian Corruptor on John's side. Uh, there's on a, there's a Corruptor on May. There actually are clues in play, so he could target a clue. There you go. Yeah. Andrew has a mana to sacrifice that. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. Wolper's down to four. Looks like Andrew's going to get this game. Mm-hmm. Still has the actor of Chandra. Mm -hmm. It's always good for two points. And he has to just find two more. So he'll get John to block his board away. Assuming it's not already just... Yeah, another Bloodbraid Elf yeah. would do it. Yeah. The second Lightning Bolt would do it. Inferno Titan would do it. And back over to Andrew. Draws for turn. Two lands in hand. So it does not have lethal just yet. And if that's true, Andrew has to ask what he wants to do with this Chandra. Swings team. And he, including the 1-1, one, one, which matters, forces the block on both 3-3s. Three if he didn't swing it, I mean, John has to block the three powers. The, there's a Chandra in play. Yep. OK, so that's the block. And says, I have Bolt. And says, okay, well, Bolt plus Chandra kills me. We're going to go to game three. Yep. This time, in fact, will be on the play, though. All right. So, Wolbers versus De Bruin. In fact, back on the play. That's a big deal that Infect is on the play. We'll see whether John can get it when we come back for game number three.
right, so game number three, De Bruin versus Wolbers. For the first time, we're going to get John De Bruin on the play. When that's the case, Ryan, how much Molten Rain, Stone Rain do you even want in the Ponza deck? You have to have answers for Ink Moth Nexus. Okay, so Blood Moon's... Does that mean you want Blood Moon, or do you want the, the land destruction spells? Blood Moon is a much better action uh, answer. You also make it more difficult for them to cast their pump spells in general. They have the two basic forests and then a number of non-basic lands. Blood Moon also just turns off Pendlehaven, which can be pretty impactful. Yeah. Buy some time so that you, way. So you keep the Blood Moons in, but if that's all you're trying to answer, is there more... Like, say John doesn't have a high work, you could, in theory, Blood Moon him out of the, and Stone Rain him out, but just on the draw, you're off it? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm more into Blood Moon in the matchup. Stone Rain has enough impact, I think. I'm not exactly sure. You, you have to maintain a good mix of threats. Bloodbraid Elf, I think, is kind of dicey in the matchup. It's pretty slow. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. If you're just hitting more creatures, it's a lot worse. Uh, it doesn't block the better creatures in the matchup, obviously. Ink Moth Nexus, you hope to Cascade into answer to that. and You only have so many answers to Blighted Agent. Well, both players going to six here. Yeah, for Wolbers, he has three Anger of the Gods and two main deck Lightning Bolt. What are these with Anger? I mean, Ponza has this weird deck because of its one mana mana accelerance. Sometimes Anger is not great in his deck. He's killing his own <laughs> mana creatures with it. In the kind of same way, sometimes you Blood Moon, your own Utopia sprawls away. There's some negative synergy going on that's unavoidable. There was a deck in Ravnica Standard, Ravnica 1, that had the idea of turn one Birds of Paradise, turn two Phyrexian Arena, turn three Wrath of God. It was referred to as the Masterpiece. And I always think of that name when I think about mana creature into accelerating to a sweeper. Yeah. Six is each side. Looks like the Bruins okay. How about our Ponza player? Both keeping on six. John's start was pretty shaky in game two. He yeah. had mana, he had the basic forest, but didn't have an infector until very late in the I game. I think that's why he kept is because he had basic forest and noble hierarch, which, hey, I get it. Yeah, those things are good. John's cries to bottom, Wolbers to the top. Turn one, Breeding Pool, Ooh. Glistener Elf. That's soft to Blood Moon, but it's scary. Right. Wolber is only on the two Lightning Bolts. Does he have one? Let's see. Arbor Elf actually squares off reasonably here. Yeah. He's going to make Utopia Sprawl. Do we have a turn two? Probably not. Not on, on six, but you never know. I mean, it, it'd be a good time for one. Ink Moth Nexus here is great, though we... Got to watch out for Blood Moon right now. That re should be a real concern yeah. as he puts one poison onto Andrew. You kind of want to just throw some pump spell in there. Yeah, I mean, if you have Spell Pierce, you probably feel safe if you're John, but otherwise... Yeah. Actually, if there was no pump spell thrown down there, I'm feeling like there would. there's a Spell Pierce. Yes, it does suggest that, especially because you have Ink Moth Nexus there, so you don't really need to leave up Blossoming like, Defense. Yeah, it's like reasons you wouldn't pump. It's like, A, I don't have a pump spell. B, <laughs> I have a spell pierce. I don't know. B seems more likely. Sometimes you get hands that are a little flush with creatures. Also, the deck plays three become immense. Okay. Can get gummed up. Andrew Shocks to 17. I mean, he's going to go for it anyway. You don't, you don't register Blood Moon to not cast it. This deck starts on three. You can't just do nothing ever. Ooh, Utopia Sprawl again. And then I do think we have a Blood Moon. So there we go, more ramp. Yeah. Now, yeah, here we go. Does it work? Does it work? What? He's pumping his Glistener Elf. Responds with Blossoming Defense, likely because he can't cast spells anymore. Oh, he's, oh he's, he just wants a card in his yard. Swings for one poison. Yeah, I mean, why not? Up. If he finds Basic Forest, he can cast Become Immense then. His hand, yeah, it's completely soft to Blood Moon at the moment. If he was going to shield down like that, I want to see him do it. You know, here's Blood Bright Elf into, not Inferno Titan, into Anger of the Gods. That, Ugh. that, Anger hits before Blood Braid, so the Elf is gone. Blood Braid swings in, John to 15. This is looking pretty bad for Infect. And he's going to pick up the card. So oh, Andrew wow. Wolbers, the one seed, moves on. Wins both sideboard games against Infect. And he's on to the finals, where he is going to be playing against 
Storm. Yeah, we'll find out which Storm pilot's going to get that matchup. Uh, Actually finishing at the same time, the answer is Dylan Kirkpatrick takes the match over Caleb Shear. So we have the one versus three seed in the finals. It's going to be Andrew Wolbers on Ponza trying to get it done, but he'll have to beat Dylan Kirkpatrick's Storm deck. Yeah, but Andrew continues to win bad matchups, so <laughs> we'll find one out more. if he can do it one more time. All right, take a short break. These players get ready and we'll be back. We will have the finals. See you then.